Have you ever heard of Friesland? It's a province in the north of the Netherlands. It has a rich history most people are not aware of. Friesland has its own flag, culture, symbols and language. In this video we're going to talk about the history of Friesland, sometimes referred to as Frisia. Hey welcome to History Hustle at Home. If you like this format, if you like this content, hey if you like history please consider subscribing. Also hit that notification bell to begin part of the hustle. Let's start. To determine the origins of Frisia we need to go back. Way back. No not that far. The Romans. Yep. So the Romans referred to the people living north of their borders as Germanic people. Now one of the Germanic people were the Frisii. The Frisii lived in what is now the north of the Netherlands. The Frisii lived in an area that are now the Dutch provinces of North Holland, Friesland and Groningen. A decade before Christ the Romans conquered the area and now the Frisii had to live under Roman rule. They had to pay taxes in forms of oat skins. On several occasions the Frisii rose against Roman rule. Sometimes this was successful and sometimes this was not successful. The Frisii joined the Batavian revolt also known as the revolt of the Batavi in 69-70 CE which was a massive uprising against Roman rule which unfortunately Failed, and the Romans took the following measures. What is now known as the Netherlands was carved up in three zones. The southern zone became part of the Roman Empire. The northern zone that was the area where the Germanic people had to live. And the middle zone would become a buffer zone between these two areas. Around 300 the Frisii territories would become depopulated because of marine transgression. And with that the ancient Frisii culture came to an end. Later, Angles and Saxons moved in the area and they refer to themselves as Frisians. However, they cannot be considered as the ancient Frisii. Now when we speak about the term Frisians, it's kind of problematic and I found an interesting quote in a recent Dutch thesis about this. The term Frisian is problematic because its meaning shifts and is not always clear at a given moment. If it refers to the people from Frisia, then was there one group of people with a common identity living in the area? Probably not, as it was more likely, also considering the landscape, that the area was inhabited by several local groups who had a history, language and maritime identity of their own, which they shared to a certain extent. So there we are in the Middle Ages. Now there the Frisian kingdom was established, was sometimes referred to as Magna Frisia or Greater Friesland. And here on this map you see the borders of this kingdom. But it's actually hard to determine what the exact borders were. The kingdoms in the early Middle Ages weren't as centralized as they would later be. So therefore it is hard to determine their exact borders. Throughout the decades Magna Frisia had several capital cities. One of them was Utrecht, the city where I live in now. And the other was Dorestad, a vibrant trading hub that would find its demise at the hands of the Vikings. But I get to that in a second because another thread loomed and I'm talking about the Franks. Yes, in the 7th and 8th century onwards the Frankish Empire started to grow and this led to several Frisian Frankish wars. Now one important reason why the Franks took up arms against the Frisians was religions. See the Frisians were not Christian as the Franks were. They had their own religion, Germanic paganism. Now I wasn't able to find much about Frisian paganism so if you have any additional content please leave it down below. Now one of the last battles between the Frisians and the Franks was the Battle of the Born in 734. Here the Frisian king Popo led his army by boats to surprise the Franks yet they were driven back and King Popo was killed in action. The Franks took over the Frisian territories west of the Lauers river and later took East Frisia as well. In 755 the Christian missionary Bishop Bonifacius he arrived at the Frisian coastal place of Duckham with his goal to Christianize the Frisians. Yet he was met by armed Frisians and according to the story Bonifacius tried to defend himself with a bible when an axe struck down on him. He did not survive. The Franks also fought against the pagan 
Saxons. Now, the Frisians often sided with the Saxons because of their shared common enemy. In the year of 793, the Frisians rose one last time against the Franks. And the reason for this was the forced recruitment of Frisians in the Carolingian army. The areas of Frisia controlled by the Franks were terrorized by Frisian bandits who looted and burned down churches. Christian missionaries were killed or chased away. The Franks crushed this uprising with brutal force and to punitive measures. The Frankish Empire crumpled from the mid 9th century. It was a time when Frankish and Germanic rulers fought over supremacy of the Low Countries. And it was also then when the Vikings make their move. Over the course of the 9th and the 10th century, Dutch coastal towns were raided by the Vikings who also made it inland. They captured the city of Dorestad, which they plundered for four times over the course of the century. In the year of 850, they captured the city of Utrecht. Now, this conquest was led by the Viking Rorik, who came from Denmark and was named Rorik of Dorestad. Now, the fact that he's named after a coastal town he occupied also implies that he settled there, although the Vikings weren't brought in in large numbers. Yet, it proves they were colonizers as well. But that's not the only thing, because they also made alliances with nearby rulers and therefore Rorik of Dorestad became a vassal. And therefore they also got involved in conflicts that were fought in the area. In 920, Utrecht was taken by the East Frankish king Henry the Fowler. The Vikings raid did continue, although less frequent, and it would come to an end early 11th century. From the end of the 11th century, the county of Holland was established. Count Floris V did several attempts to take the West Frisian lands. In the beginning, his campaign did not fare well. Yet, in the year of 1287, the St. Lucia's flood took place. Estimations vary, but approximately 50,000 Frisians were killed in this and thus the people of Holland could easily take the West Frisian lands. When Floor V passed away the Frisians rebelled and this led to a series of Friso-Hollandic wars that would last all the way until the early 15th century. Now the resistance of the Frisians against the people of Holland would earn them the so-called Frisian freedom where there was no feudal and serfdom tradition in Friesland. However, this freedom can be considered as fairly relative considering which time and which area we are talking about. Also because the county of Holland would claim its dominance over the region from time to time. Early 15th century Friesland would become part of the Habsburg Netherlands and later it would sign the Union of Utrecht where the Dutch provinces united themselves against Spanish aggression. In 1588 the Dutch Republic was established and Friesland was part of this. The area of Emden would remain a Dutch protectorate until the 18th century when Frederick the Great claimed it for himself and this explains why this area is part of Germany today and known as Ostfriesland. After the French Revolution and the Batavian Revolution in the Netherlands had taken place, Friesland became respectively part of the Batavian Republic, the Kingdom of Holland, the French Empire and after Napoleon's defeat, the United Kingdom of the Netherlands. Ever since, Friesland remains a province of the Netherlands, a province with its own culture, its own language and a place you should definitely check out one day. Even for me as a southern Dutchman it feels a little bit like going abroad. Now if you want to know more about the history of the Vikings and what the role of the Frisians was in this you can check out the video that I made about that right here. I have a Patreon page so if you want to support me please do so I can make better cooler and more awesome content for you. I want to thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe. Utmon.